So on Friday, we looked at simplifying inside radicals, multiplying radicals together, that kind of thing. Today, we're going to add in addition and subtraction, and we're also going to add in some more complex multiplication. Okay. So day two is going to look like this. We're going to have problems that all of a sudden look like addition problems like this. And we're going to treat them like algebraic expressions, even though there are no variables involved in this particular problem. On problems like this, what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to treat each part like it's its own problem first and simplify it as far as you can. Okay? And then what our hope is, is that after we've simplified it as far as we can, what's left over in the radical, if there's anything left over in the radical, will be the same for each part, and then we can combine them together. So let's start with the first part. What is the biggest perfect square that is a factor of 8, that goes into 8? 4, okay. What is the biggest perfect square that goes into 50? 25. So what I want to do first is I want to break it down like this. Now, I know um, your TI-30 XSs will do it for you. Okay. Make sure that you know how to do it, though, because come test and quiz time, I need to see the work. I don't need to see that your calculator will do it for you. I want you to know how to break it down. So since 4 is the biggest perfect square that goes into 8, this becomes 4 times 2. 25 is the perfect square that goes into 50, so this is 25 times 2. Well, what is the square root of 4? 15. Square root of 4? 2. two. What is the square root of 25? Five. 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 So here's what my next step becomes. Okay, the 4, the square root of 4 comes out as a 2, and it's going to get multiplied by the 4 that was already here. The square root of 25 comes out as a 5, and it's going to get multiplied by the 3. And the 2 underneath, can't, we can't do anything with that, so it stays underneath. So this is some of the same stuff that we did on Friday. Now I just need to multiply. This becomes 8 root 2, and this becomes 15 root 2. Okay. And so how this one works out, this one works out good because <laughs> I have the same radical left. So what we're going to do is we're going to treat those like like terms. Okay, so like terms happen when we have the same variable. In this case, we don't have any variable, um, which is why I put like terms in quotation marks because it's not technically like terms. But if I have 8 square roots of 2 and I add it to 15 square roots of 2, what do you think I will get? Over here I have 8 square roots of 2, over here I have 15 square roots of 2, add them together, I'm going to get what? 23 square roots of 2. So really all you're doing is you're adding the front parts together like they are like terms and then the radical 2 stays the same. Okay. That's it? That is, that's it. So the hardest part here is finding the perfect squares that go into the numbers, <laughs> simplifying as far as you can, and then hopefully there will be some like terms and you can add them. There won't always be like terms but you still want to try to simplify as far as you can, okay? Are there any questions on that problem? Okay, let's look at another one. So this one just adds one, there's two things. There's three terms now instead of two, and now I've got a subtraction. But you're going to work through it the same way. So why don't you go ahead and give that a shot. There's all square roots, so you're looking for factors of these numbers that are perfect squares. And you might have to play around with it for a little bit until you find them. So go ahead and work through that, and let's see how you do. So here's what, here's what we're going to do here, okay? What is the biggest perfect square that goes into 12? 4 times 3. 4. Okay, so when I take the square root of 4, what comes out? 2. A 2. So 2 gets multiplied by this 5. What's the biggest perfect square that goes into 27? 9. 9. So what comes out? 3. 3. Biggest perfect square that goes into 128? 64. So what comes out? An 8. Okay, so here's what I've got. And I, and I took the liberty of going a little quicker, right? So that square root of 4 comes out as a 2. Square root of 9 comes out as a 3. Square root of 64 comes out as a 2. Now, let me move it down so I can... It's not very nice. So this is 4 times 3. This is 9 times 3. And this is 
64 times 2. So these things here match up with the numbers in front. Okay, the square root of 4, the 2 comes out. The square root of 9, the 3 comes out. The square root of 64, the 8 comes out. Where did the 2 come from? Wait, which 2? From the 5? The square root of 4. It's because he didn't do as much work as we did. I, I did it again. No, no, no. I showed it. That's okay, did, yeah. next. So I showed it up here. Okay, and then this square root of 4 comes out as a 2. Square root of 3, or square root of 9 comes out as a 3. Square root of 64 comes out as an 8. Now, once I have that, okay, I can multiply this. That's 10 root 3, 6 root 3, 8 root 2. So yeah, this one's going to be off on its own. I'm not going to be able to combine it. These two both have square roots of 3. So what is this part going to give me here? 16 square root of 3 minus 8 root 2, and that's all I can do. Oh. Okay? So, so I can't combine these together because they have different numbers under the radical, so that's it. I'm done. So here's the next part. All right? So I have this binomial times a binomial. What do you think I need to do here? Distribute. Distribute how? What do we call it usually? Foil. Foil. We call it foil. Okay, so you actually have to have four multiplications here. You're going to have to multiply this one by those two and this one by those two. And then after you do that multiplication, you simplify as much as you can. Okay, so go ahead and give that a shot. Regular foil with radicals. My first multiplication, I'm going to multiply 6 root 3 times 2 root 5. So I multiply the outsides together and the insides together. What does that give me? No. Look. 6 root 3 times 2 root 5. What is this going to give me? 12. What? 12 root 15. Very good. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to take 6 root 3 times 4 root 2. What is that going to give me? 24 root 6. Steps. Right? Where I went through it one at a time. And again, we went through all the different factors and there weren't any. So my final answer... And here, here is all this. Here are all. That's what you have today. So, again, if 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 you can simplify them, simplify them. Try to combine like terms. But if you can't, you can't, and you're done. So in this case, like we just went through, you can't. So that's it. That's all you gotta do. So it's just that whole thing. Okay. I don't want decimal answers. I don't want you converting that stuff to decimals. Give me some crazy decimal answer. The whole point is to simplify our radicals as far as we can and try to find some like terms.